Hey there everybody and welcome back. We've been blessed with another beautiful day today so I wanted to walk you through the basics of how to install subwoofers to a stock setup so basically stock car audio system. Today I'm going to be working with a 2015 Mazda CX-5 Grand Touring however you should be able to follow similar steps as it's a pretty similar process for most vehicles so quick disclaimer make sure you're doing this at your own risk consult your manufacturer's warranty uh, manuals setups and all that just you're going to be dealing with the car's electrical system so make sure you're disconnecting the battery and you're doing everything safely so again this is for educational purposes only all right let's jump straight in so we have here two pretty standard 10 inch these are memphis street edge subwoofers we have our memphis amp on the back so i'll walk through the basics of what you're going to need first now most kits online so for example stinger is one of my brands of choice uh, they'll offer an entire kit to install. Typically what this will include is a set of RCA cables. This is a single cable, but they'll typically have two that are stuck together. You will typically have some, uh, usually like a four or a zero or two gauge wire. So they'll have one for the power, one for the ground. You'll have your, uh, basically like your typical amp turn on wire. So this is your kind of generic, almost speaker looking wire. And this is going to be the remote turn on wire to tell the amp when to turn on and when to shut off. That way you're not always killing your battery. And then you will also have speaker wire, which is just going to look like this here. So you can typically buy those stinger kits or kits from whatever brand. I recommend trying to think long term when you're buying these. So I typically try to shoot for a four gauge kit. It'll tell you what wattage it's rated for. But if you try to push too much power through a wire that's too small or not high quality, then it can actually melt the outside of this and cause damage to the vehicle and the electrical system. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So we're going to go open this back door here. And we are going to look at the back of the amp to get an idea as to what is actually going to be run. So this is um, not a terribly big amp but when you're getting an amp you're going to want to make sure that the wattage is something that your alternator and your battery can handle so if you try to pull too much power it can damage the electrical system on the car more specifically cause damage to the alternator or you may just need to upgrade it so it's going to pull power from other areas of the car if your alternator is not set up to handle whatever it is that you need so we're going to walk over the inputs on this amp so you'll see here we have our ground wire we have our power we have the wires going to the subwoofers, so this is the speaker wire. And then over here, we have our two RCA cables. And if we look a little bit more closely, you'll see our remote turn on wire right there. So this was actually something I had professionally installed, but check out the links in the description. I'll do a video going over my thoughts and kind of rate the quality of the installation and also let you know some things you need to watch out for. So now we're going to go under the hood of the car and kind of get a general idea as to how we're going to run everything. But the general idea is the power wire is typically the hardest one to run because that's going through the firewall of the car. The ground wire is usually pretty simple. So we'll go through all of that in just a second, kind of digest how all these cables are set up and run. Um, but let's go ahead and jump under the hood of the car. All right, so you'll see right here, pretty easy to guess which one is the power wire. I did make this a little bit longer than I probably needed to, but just wanted to walk you through the basics. So you're going to have your battery terminals here. Again, make sure you're disconnecting this before you're working on it. So we are not running a ground from the negative side of the battery to the back of the car. You want those ground wires, and honestly all wires, to be as short as possible. So we're going to ground it to the chassis. So for the power wire, which we'll just call input one, the hardest one to run because you have to go through the firewall of the vehicle, you will typically have the wire, you'll have a terminal right here that you'll stick. Um, so you're basically attaching to the terminal of the battery. So you will have, you'll strip off some of this coating, which I'll go over in a second. You'll attach it to the positive terminal on the battery. You're gonna to wanna to have your fuse holder to make sure that your system isn't getting fried if there's a power surge. And then the remainder of the wire goes through the firewall. To get a general idea as to where you can put this through the firewall, you can actually take out the battery and you should be able to see, we'll move over just a bit. So if you look through here, you should be able to see that there are a couple of different wires feeding through the power wall of, or the uh, firewall of the car. So I'll go inside and show you what that looks like. 
So typically you can actually feed this wire through with the other wires that are going through already. There should be a grommet. Some cases you may need to drill a new hole and add in a grommet of your own. So let's go under the... Uh, so we're at the driver's seat. So we're gonna look where this comes through the firewall. We'll, uh, let's move this up just a bit. So you'll see we have all these wires coming through. This is the stock wiring. And then you'll see that I've added some sound dampening material here. So um, if you want to learn more about that, check out the links in the description. But you'll see the power wire is right here. So basically, all that there is to it here, I'll turn on a light real quick. So you'll see this blue wire right here is the power wire. The rest of it is just what's going through the grommet. So I added the sound dampening over top. But the general idea is... The grommet, I actually, when I had this installed, they pushed it through and just ran the power wire around it, so it uh, really sounded terrible when there was a lot of road noise. Most of the time, you can drill a hole through the grommet or through the firewall of the car if you know where the clutch would be installed, if this was a manual, for example. So I have an automatic. So you'll typically have cutouts for where the clutch would be. If you have an, a manual, then you would obviously have to find a different area. So basically, first things first, you get some kind of access to go through the firewall of the car, get your power wire run through, and then typically this will run along the side of the vehicle. So you can typically pull out these plastic panels relatively easily. So typically you'll wiggle them back and forth. You may need to pull out a couple of screws and you'll see we have our remote turn on and our power wire here. So if you're trying to figure out what do you need to tap into for the remote turn on, the reason for this is you want to make sure that your remote turn on wire tells your amp when to turn on and when to turn off. That way it's not always using power. So I'm not a fan of how this was done at all. This was actually done by the installer, but I did want to show you what they did. It's an interesting idea. So we have the remote turn on wire here, basically just shoved in where the fuse is for an outlet up front that turns off when the car turns off. So nothing special. So you'll see the remote turn on and the power wire are going straight through these panels to the back. Obviously I need to clean the vehicle as well. So they continue to feed through here. You can see it kind of sticking out, so I'll need to do some cleanup there. Um, so when you're running these, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you're zip tying them to do some just basic cable maintenance. And then you can see where they stick out right here. So we're gonna to go to the back of the vehicle now. So once you have your power wire run to the back of the vehicle, you'll want to strip uh, probably about a quarter inch off, depending on the type of amp that you're using. You'll want to strip it and then kind of clean this up a little bit. And then this is going to feed into the amp. You'll do the same thing on the other side and you'll clamp on one of these pieces so that you can actually attach it to the terminal on the battery of the vehicle. And that's effectively your power wire. Your ground wire, you're probably gonna to wanna to try to keep it under three or two feet if possible. And you're doing the exact same thing, except this is going to the chassis of the vehicle. So, so far you have your power wire run from the battery down the side of the car to the back. And you'll see that this is attached right here. And then our ground wire, same setup. We have it attached here. And if we follow this wire, another thing I'm not a huge fan of, it is attached to the rear seat. So typically the ground wire, you're gonna to wanna to go directly to the chassis of the vehicle, but you'll see they basically took an aluminum brush to rub off the paint and then bolted it to the ground, uh, to basically just bolt it to the back seat. So it's just being grounded on the back seat, which attaches to the chassis. I would prefer to go directly to the chassis, so basically where the seat bolts to it. But again, that's covered in the video where I'm basically assessing this overall install. And then this piece just bolts back over top. So we've basically done power and ground at this point. So next thing, we also have the remote turn on. Same exact thing, you're cutting off about a quarter inch and you're feeding it straight in to your remote turn on here. So you'll see these are all clearly labeled and that is those three. So now your amp is actually functioning, but it's not getting any audio and it's not pushing anything anywhere. So the next thing we're going to want to do is hook up the speakers. Very simple, you take your speaker wire you feed from your positive and negative, and then the speaker wire is going to go directly to the positive and negative on the subwoofers. 
So these are set up to where this is powering both of them. You can find wiring diagrams to figure out how you want to set yours up. But those are basically set up. So now everything's taken care of except the audio signal. So at this point, we've powered the amp, told it when to turn on, have the sound feeding to the subwoofers, but there's no way to tell the amp, hey, what music, what sound are we playing? So that's where these RCA cables come in. If you're using an aftermarket radio, you can pull the radio out and plug the, basically the RCA cables into the back of the head unit and it, if it has a subwoofer output. If it does not, and we're working with a stock system, then you have a very unique option here. So you'll see kind of tied down in here with all of these other cables, we have this little box. It's a pack converter. So some of these are called LC2s. They have different brands and models. But basically what we have here is we have the speaker wire for the rear speakers. So these are in the doors here. So basically what's done is you take these speaker wires and it's a pretty simple setup. So this box on one side is input, one side is output. So these speaker wires feed in to the right side of the box. And then on the left side of the box, you have the RCA cables. So you find speaker wires anywhere you can. Try to find speaker wires that are pulling to speakers that actually handle lower frequencies, since that's what your subwoofers are going to be doing. So try to avoid pulling from like tweeters, you know, those high frequency small speakers. Uh, and also make sure that you look up your wiring diagram for your vehicle. Some vehicles use specific modules to clean up the audio. So you're gonna want to avoid that if at all possible. So basically try to focus on pulling from wires and speakers that are actually going to make your subwoofers sound as good as possible. So again, we have this, we've pulled wires from two of the speakers, just the positive and negative terminals. Then we've hooked it into this converter and it hooks up just like this. You basically just feed the wires in. On the other side, you plug in your RCA cables and then we will follow that cord and it gets hooked up right here. So you'll see we have our line input. We can do left and right, or you'll see, so we have left, right, and the way that it's set up really depends on your amp and how you're playing this, but you can set it up if you're doing two channels for your left and right, that way, uh, things will sound as they should when you're controlling the audio from the front, but this is an alternative way to do it. So again, left, right, and we can set it up uh, if we just have one set of RCA cables as well. And then once you have that set up, all of the inputs for your amp are taken care of. So at this point, it's time to seal up everything, work on your cable maintenance. So that's where you're gonna be zip tying everything, trying to figure out where you can fit these. So in a CX-5 in the back of the vehicle, we actually have this little carpet piece where you can push these down. And when you push your seats back, you won't even notice it. And then we mount the amp to the back of the subwoofers, and then you would get rid of any additional cables. And then everything is set up. When you turn it on, you're gonna want to test it. Your tuning is typically gonna be on one side of the amp. So you move the cable out of the way, tune it to whatever frequencies you need. Another thing to make sure you have this set up correctly, this power protection light should only appear when the amp is on. So if it's always on, you did not tap into the right remote turn on or power source, and you're going to need to look into finding something different. Um, but that's just one small thing to note. You also may be able to hook up a base knob if your amp is capable of running that. So that's really the basics. So again, check out the links in the description. I'm gonna go into more detail on this install, kind of rate how they did it. And another thing, if you don't want your subwoofers bouncing around, you can go buy some L brackets and mount them so that they, you know, stay in place. So again, the basics, you're running power from the battery of the vehicle all the way down the side, remote turn on, you're grounding it to the chassis of the vehicle. You are getting RCA cables either from your head unit or pulling from the back speakers using a converter of some kind. You would have to get one for your vehicle. And then once you have your remote turn on and you have your subwoofers hooked up, that's really all that there is to it. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.